This video is a follow-up and re-upload intended to debunk the video I uploaded on the 27th of May, which was titled The Secret of the Intro Cinematic. I've taken that video down as I don't want to spread misinformation. The first section of this video will be the unedited video with all my original speculation. I will then go over why none of these points make any sense. If you've already watched the original video, feel free to skip to the second half of this video, timestamped here. This video contains a fair bit of speculation over a single image. Spoilers ahead. Turn back now, ye tarnished, lest ye be spoiled. Ugh. In the process of writing the script for my next video on Mikola, I came across this section of the intro cinematic. As soon as I saw this image, I had so many questions and so many theories, and I wanted to share some of them with you guys. Due to the context of the cinematic intro, the first thing we can tell is that this image happens during or very shortly after the Shattering War. Whether it's early in the Shattering or later, we can't really tell. Central in this image is this figure. Mostly because of my last two videos that were on Moog, my initial thought was indeed him, Moog. I don't believe there are any other notable people who would fit this particular figure. It's also important to note that if this is Moog, he does not appear to have his iconic Moguin sacred spear. Perhaps this is evidence that he didn't make or receive his iconic weapon until far later in the Shattering. However, it's also possible that this is just the spear side on. If we look now to the being on the right, we have three main possibilities. Our star with the least likely. It's possible that this is a finger reader crone. Early in the Shattering, their opinions and readings were likely still valued by the demigods, but I find it very unlikely that this is the case, especially considering the amount of dead crones in Leyendel, and that Moog was courting an outer god as soon as he left the subterranean shunning grounds. The second possibility is Morgot. The figure does seem to look like him but very hunched over, and the coloration does make sense. This would then suggest that Moog and Morgot fought together during the earlier parts of the Shattering, but why would they need to? And this leads me to the final part of this image, the large golden thing on the left hand side of the image. The first possible answer is that this is Rikard, or more accurately something to do with the god devouring snake. We know that Leyendel went to war with Mount Gelmir over Rikard's blasphemous ways, and in fact Leyendel forces are still seen there. We also see Rikard in the intro cinematic literally seconds before this. The main issue with this theory is that we have no evidence, as far as I know, that Rikard or the God Devouring Snake ever fought on the battlefield during the Shattering. It's also likely that this would have to be a part of or the God Devouring Snake itself, which just really doesn't add up. Another option for what this could be is Godfrey's arm. Godfrey was likely the father or brother of Godric, and he was a large part of the siege on Leyendel. He was defeated and then captured by Dragon Knight Kristoff who put him in an Everjail near the Grand Lift of Dectus. The main flaw to this concept is that we have no real evidence that Moog or Morgoth fought Godfrey. This image also doesn't look much like the outskirts of Leyendel, it looks a lot more like Kaled, which leads us to another possibility. We see during the intro cutscene a battle between Morgoth, in this case Margaret the Fell Omen, and Radan, or one of Radan's soldiers. This could indeed be a battle at Kaled, which would also place Moog there during the Shattering. The piece on the left would then have to be siege weaponry or or something similar, which is possible. We're now going to move on to our most likely possibility. The white blob on the right, rather than being Morgot, is the cocoon of Mikola. We can see wispy white tendrils across this image that are similar to the silk of Mikola's cocoon. Mikola also appears to be covered in it during his section of the cutscene with Moog. This image being taken in Kaled would also make a lot more sense, as Kaled is directly above the Moguin dynasty. This could also then suggest that possibly the reason that Melania went to Kaled was to find Mikola, but instead she ended up fighting Radan. Melania, however, doesn't seem to know Mikola has been taken, so this really isn't very well backed up, at least this particular section. The final question for this then is that if the item on the right is indeed Mikola's cocoon, and this is indeed Kaled, then what is the item on the left? Sadly, I have no reasonable answer for this besides a piece of broken siege equipment. Again, it's very difficult to tell. Now that you've watched that, let's debunk these theories. The first and most obvious thing to point out is that this is obviously Kaled by the rot and colour scheme. Secondly is the very obvious halo scythe used exclusively by clean rot knights. We see clean rot knights in very few places across the lands between. 
the main two being the Halig Tree and Kaled. And this particular item drops only in Kaled as far as I know. This image is most likely shortly after the Battle of Aeonia, between the aforementioned Cleanrot Knights under Melania, Blade of Mikola, and the Redmain Knights under Star Scourge Radan. This is backed up by the next shot being Melania, and then her and Radan engaged in battle. This image shows, on the left, what is most likely a Cleanrot Knight Helm, or more accurately, two of them. It's hard to make out, but the figure on the right might also have that helm on. The figure in the middle, purely from coloration, could be a red main knight as they wear reds and blacks. Some commenters have mentioned that this could be the fabled journey of the clean rot knight Finlay, who carried Melania back to the Halic Tree after her bloom in the fight with Radan. There is no evidence that shows that this is Finlay, but more importantly, no evidence of Melania in this image. In fact, there is little indication of any demigods being in this image. There's zero evidence a finger maiden would be here. Rikard and Morgoth are extremely unlikely to have been in Kaled during this battle, even considering Morgoth fight fighting Radan or a Redmain Knight, which doesn't look like it occurred in Kaled. Only outlier here is Moog, who plausibly could have gone through Kaled due to circumstantial evidence that Kaled is directly over the Moguin dynasty. However, the more reasonable and likely answer is that Moog used the teleporter in the consecrated snowfields. Because we can see Albanorix on both sides of this teleporter, there's evidence that this teleporter is able to be used by other beings in the game, not just us, and therefore Moog would have been able to use it. There's also very little evidence that Moog transported Mikola in a cocooned form. In fact, exactly the opposite. The image we see during this cinematic shows that Mikola is out of his cocoon. So all of that said, this image likely shows the aftermath and fallout of the Battle of Aeonia, and very little else. The majority of this video, in hindsight, was indeed as some people mentioned, reaching. And that's purely because I missed some of the more obvious indicators that were staring me right in the face. I completely missed the Halo Scythe and the Helms. And while I did mention the coloration could be Kaled, I put little stock in it in order to speculate a little bit more wildly. The video was mostly baseless and subpar, and for that I do apologise. You deserve better from my content, and I will make sure that my videos continue to be a better standard than this and all of my other videos before it. I do want to thank the people who took the time to point out my obvious mistakes politely. You are the real MVPs here. Continue to question my work where it does not make sense and comment about it. All of my speculation should be up to scrutiny. That being said, I do intend to keep speculating in future videos. This channel was always intended to be more theories rather than just lore, and I will continue to do that. But this video has reminded me that a theory with no basis is more than worthless, it is potentially harmful. On this trend of ensuring my next video is the best it can be, I intend to take my time with the Mikola videos, as there is far more to discuss than I even expected, and I want to make sure that those videos are the best researched and made that I can make them. Thank you for watching and supporting me. As a horrid man once said, Your officiousness knows no bounds.